Hey y'all, let's take a look at the uniform unequal distance problems. We've done these before, but they were equal distances where we just found out, we just had an equation where we went, you know, the distance of this equals the distance of that. And we just set them equal. This, we're going to do exactly the same setup. All these are the same setup, basically. You're going to find four equations. One's a rate, one's a time, one's a distance, and one is whatever is in there. So, well, drawing a picture helps if you're a visual learner. If not, if you're a nasal learner, you know, bring along some something to scratch and sniff if it helps. But let's do this. Okay, at 8 p.m., Achilles leaves sewing camp and heads south at 20 miles per hour. Well, there's an equation, right? The rate of Achilles is 20. We got one. At 10 p.m., Hercules heads south from the same camp. Hercules is 50 miles ahead by 3 a.m. Well, first off, there are times. We can do that, right? If Achilles goes from 8 p.m. to 3 a.m., there's another equation, right? So what's the time of Achilles? Seven, right? Okay. Well, what's the time of Hercules? He leaves at 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. That's going to be five, right? So we've got a rate, a time, and a time. Now we need a distance, okay? So uh, here's Achilles if you want to draw this thing. There he is. He leaves sewing camp, right? He goes this way, okay? At 10 p.m., there's Hercules head south from the same camp. Okay, so it's the same place they left from. So there's Hercules. And he goes like this, and they tell us Hercules ends up 50 miles ahead. So there's 50 miles. In other words, the distance of Hercules is 50 miles longer than the distance of Achilles. So how would you write that as an equation? If the distance of Hercules, of course, we don't use Ds, right? We'll say the distance of Hercules is the rate of Hercules times the time of Hercules. That is equal to the distance of Achilles, then what? Plus 50, right? Okay, plus 50. There we go. And we've got it. So we've got four unknowns in that equation, but we've got three of them right there. So we can find out the, you know, the rate of Hercules by sticking all the stuff in. So let's just do that. Rate of Hercules, we know we don't know. So I'll just put rate of Hercules, all right? Time of Hercules is five, right? I'll just put that in front here so it looks like a normal equation. The rate of Achilles is 20. The time of Achilles is seven, then plus 50, and we got it. So five times the rate of Hercules, and then 20 times seven is 140. 140 plus 50 is 190. And if you just do the arithmetic, you'll get it. Five and the 19 is three. There's four left over, so five into 40 is eight. So there we go, there's the rate of Hercules, okay. All right, drawing a picture helps. Go ahead and do it. All right, let's try another one. This is a more practical one. A student with a Chick-fil-A sandwich has a 15 mile head start on a certain middle-aged man. How long will it take the man to catch the student? But the student travels 70 miles per hour and he travels 100 miles per hour. In other words, this is the student, right? All right, we'll call him S, and he's going, or whatever, right this way. Okay, he has a 15-mile head start on a certain middle-aged man. Okay, here's the middle-aged man, let's say. All right, we'll just call him M for middle-aged. All right, so in other words, from here to here is 15, right? That's 15. So this middle-aged man starts, and then he goes, and then boom! He catches up, which means their distances after we get caught up boom, become the same. All right, so that's a big explosion. Okay, then pieces of the chicken sandwich start flying all over the place. Here's the bun, here's the bottom bun. It's like a baseball cap. Okay, there, here's one of the pickles. Here's another pickle flying over here, and so on. No, that's a pickle. There we go. They're blue pickles. They're also closed pickles. There we go. Okay. So now we have a distance equation, right? So the distance of the middle-aged man is the same as the distance of the student, but he has to go 15 miles an hour longer. So if you want to put the distance of the middle-aged man is the distance of the student plus 15, right? Okay, but we don't write these, so we're just gonna write the rate of the man, the time of the man is equal to the rate of the student, time of the student plus 15. 15. There's our first, probably most complicated equation there. Okay. Well, how long will it take the man to catch student? Okay, the student travels 70 miles per hour, so that means the rate of the student is 70. And he travels 100. Well, the rate of the 
man is 100. And we're only missing one type of problem. What kind, what kind of a problem are we missing? The time problem, right? Well, as far as we can tell, there is no time given anywhere. Head start, how long, miles per hour. There's nothing in here at all that says anything about time whatsoever. So what we're going to assume then is that their times are the same. Like, he, there's this man, he's standing there. There's a student standing there. The man looks over. He glances over and sees, hey, 15 miles away, I think I see a student with a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Although that could be just, I don't know, a, you know, a small suitcase. But I think it's, that's it, he starts running. The student looks over. There's a middle-aged man with funny-looking hairdo and glasses. He's chasing me. Okay, he starts running. So the assumption is he looks over and sees him. He looks over and sees him. Ah! They both start running at the same time. So in other words, the time of the man is the same thing as the time of the student. I mean, there's nothing else given us to assume anything else, so you have to stick it in there. All right, so there's a big equation that we want to start sticking stuff in. So rate of the man, 100. Time of the man, we don't know. Oops, wait a second, that shouldn't be, the rate of the man, that should be student. Need to race there. So, doop, and then, boop. And then back here. Okay, so the rate of the student is 70. The time of the student, we don't know, but we're not gonna put T sub S in there. That means that we have an equation with two unknowns we can't solve. So since the time of the student is the same thing as the time of the man, we just put T sub in there again, and then we put plus 15. All right, so let's solve this. This goes over here. This is gonna be 30 time of the man equals 15, because we move this over. Okay, so time of the man is 15 divided by 30, which is just, you know, a half. So it's a half an hour. We can check this and uh, take a look and see what we get here. So if the uh, man goes half an hour, he's going 100 miles an hour. Well, then half an hour, then he goes 50 miles, correct? That checks. All right. If the student is going 70 miles an hour, he goes half an hour. Well, what's half a 70? Well, that's 35, right? He might go, wait a minute, that's not the same thing. But don't forget, the student has a 15 mile head start on the man. So we're gonna add 15 to that. In that case, their distances will be exactly the same that we got, there we go, okay. All right, let's try one last one. Frank and Stein jog around a circular track, 210 whatever long, we don't even care what it is. Frank, excuse me, Stein's rate is 230 per minute. Frank's is 200 per minute, and how many minutes will Stein be a full lap ahead? Ugh, that sounds like so complicated, doesn't it? All right, yeesh. Well, they're jogging around this track, 210 meters long. There's a rate, and at least let's kind of pick this apart. This looks really complicated. There's a rate, there's a rate, you know, and they jog around the track, and it doesn't tell us any time at all, if you notice this, when do they, how long do they jog? There's nothing in around uh, about this about time. So you have to assume that somebody just went, go, and they both started jogging at the same time. So their times are gonna be the same, all right? So the only distance you're gonna wanna figure out is at what point is Stein gonna be a full lap ahead? Now, well, how long is a full lap ahead? Well, the full lap ahead is 210, right? In other words, we want an equation where the distance of Stein is the same thing as the distance of Frank plus 210. That's what we want, right? So we're at, they're asking how long was it gonna be until Stein is a full lap ahead? Well, Stein's distance is gonna be that plus 210. So that's our first one. So at least we can write that so far. So we got rate of Stein, time of Stein is equal to rate of Frank, time of Frank plus 210. That's our first equation, okay? We said that the rate is two, okay, so that we have a rate of Stein is 230. The rate of Frank is 200. And the time we have to assume, since there isn't anything given to us at all, that they're the same. And there you go. That's, I mean, that's, that's not easy to figure out by looking at something like that. But drawing it and kind of figuring out what's going on, it'll help you a lot. 
uh, a nice thing to do to keep you, get yourself going is just to go ahead and start. As soon as you see the rate is 230, just write, rate is 230. Oh, this rate's 200, rate's 200. And then uh, how many minutes will, oh man, a full lap. Well, how long is a full lap? Oh, there's nothing time. They don't give you any time. Just go ahead and write this equation because the times are assuming they're the same. So let's go ahead and just plop this stuff in here. So the rate of uh, Stein is 230. Uh, the time of Stein, we don't know yet. Rate of Frank, 200. Uh, time of Frank, we already know, is the same thing as time of Stein. So there you go, plus 210. So we're going to subtract this from that, which will give us 30. Time of Stein is 210. And 3 goes into 21. Seven times, so there's your answer. Okay. All right. Okay, let's try A. Go ahead and pause it and try A. We'll come back. All right, let's draw. At 5 a.m., Napoleon headed south from Waterloo at four kilometers per hour. So let's just stop right there. We've got a rate of Napoleon is four. All right? And uh, we have a total, if you can see this, we start at 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. and we finish at 2 p.m. So we have the time of Napoleon is 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. Well, that means the time of Napoleon was nine. Well, uh, Wellington starts at 7 a.m. and goes at 2 p.m. So the time of Wellington is 7. Now we're just missing the distance equation, right? Well, let's look. Here's Napoleon. He heads south. He goes, I don't know. There he is. There's Napoleon. Okay, he's going there. At 7 a.m., Wellington went south from Waterloo. Okay, same place. There's Wellington. Okay. Well, he goes south, too. He passes Napoleon and is 20 miles ahead of him whatever, kilometers, whatever you want to call them. Light years, if you want, it doesn't matter. Okay, so there's 20 here, all right? So our equation is that, you know, what the distance of Wellington is the same thing as the distance of Napoleon plus 20. So the distance of Wellington is the same thing as the distance of Napoleon plus 20. And again, we don't use Ds. So we'll go the rate of Wellington, time of Wellington equals the rate of Napoleon, time of Napoleon plus 20. Okay, and this is what we'll use to, you know, throw all this stuff in there. So rate of Wellington, we don't know because that's what they're asking, right? Time of Wellington we know is seven. So seven times the rate of Wellington. Rate of Napoleon, we figured out was four. Time of Napoleon was nine plus 20. There we go. Okay. So seven times the rate of Wellington is 36 plus 20 is 56. So Wellington is going eight miles an hour. And there we go. Let's just test it just for the heck of it, okay? Wellington's going seven hours, right? 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. He's going seven hours. He goes eight miles an hour, so he goes 56 miles, correct? Uh, Napoleon is going from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. nine hours at four miles per hour, whatever. So he goes a total of 36, okay? But you might go, what? But then you go, oh yeah, that's right. Wellington's 20 ahead of him. 56 is 20 ahead of 36, bam, go to the next one. Okay, uh, speaking of that, let's go to the, to the next one. Pause it and come back when you're ready. Okay, Helen has a four kilometer head start on Paris. All right, well, here we go. Well, how long will it take Paris to catch Helen? In other words, here's Paris. Yoink, there's Paris. Okay, Helen has a four kilometer head start. Okay, well, here's Helen now. Like that. And we're talking about catching, which means, you know, we're going to catch her. So, in other words, from here to here is four. And that gives you your first equation, right? In other words, the distance of Paris is the same thing as the distance of Helen plus four. All right, let's rewrite that with R's and T's. So, the rate of Paris. Time of Paris equals the rate of Helen, time of Helen plus four. All right, there's our first one. All right, Helen travels at six, six per hour, so the rate of Helen is six. Rate of Paris is eight, so the rate of Paris is eight. Now we're missing a time equation, right? And again, there's nothing in here given whatsoever that talks about any kind of time at all. So we're just gonna have to assume that their times are the same. So the time of Helen is the same thing as the time of Paris. And there you go. We'll just fill it in. Rate of Paris, eight. Time of Paris, we don't know. Just put T sub P. 
Rate of Helen, we know is six. Time of Helen is the same thing as the time of Paris. So we're gonna put that instead. And then plus four, there we go. So this goes over, becomes two times there, and then equals four, and of course the time of Paris is two, all right? How long will it take Paris? It'll take her two hours. Let's just check, okay? Paris is going at eight miles an hour. She goes two hours. That means she's going 16 miles total, right? Okay. Well, uh, Helen is going six. She goes the same time, right? So she's going a total of 12. You might go, what's going on with that? That's only 12. Well, remember, she has a four mile or kilometer head start. There we go. Okay. All right. That was it for today. See you guys next time.